Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. Um, my name is Barty Mezuria. You, I am sure you have, uh, uh, you know, you know me by now. Um, so a little bit about this session. We have, um, this is a sort of a, a panel where you are uh, welcome to ask any specific questions that you may have with regards to how you can expand your current Sage solution. So before this session, and you may not have been in that session, and that's totally okay, but the theme or the, the goal of this discussion is if you're running Sage and if you have a gap, um, you are welcome to ask a question as to how you can eliminate that gap, learn from um, Rob, Sandra, and James will be in here in a minute, to understand what the options are, right? So it's all about hearing your questions and answering them. Now, we've collected some online questions. If, you, if we don't get any questions from this audience, then we'll go through some of these and that may give you some ideas as well, okay? But first, I'm gonna uh, um, ask um, Sandra Hunter uh, to introduce herself and say a few words and then uh, Rob, and then we'll, get, we'll uh, get to your questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sandra Hunter. I am the manager of finance for the New Brunswick Medical Society, which is the professional association for the physicians uh, in our province. So by government, everybody is, or all physicians are mandated to be a member of our organization. So we have uh, an annual renewal that we go through on the accounts receivable side. Um, as representatives of the physicians, we also uh, administer a number of programs on behalf of the province. So we do a lot of claims on the accounts payable side that uh, we have integrated with the CRM system. Thank you, Sandra. Rob? Uh, good morning, everyone again. Uh, Robert Lavery, president of Robert Lavery and Associates. Our organization is the North American distributor for six of the largest and most successful SDK-based third-party developers for Sage 300. I emphasize SDK, that stands for Software Development Kit. That means that the applications are written exclusively for Sage 300. They run in the same database. They use the same land pack licenses for multi-user access, and they look exactly like the rest of the core Sage 300 modules. I'll just briefly give you an overview of those six development partners and some of their key solutions, so that if you have questions about any of these, please feel free to ask during this session. Uh, first off, Parasoft, out of South Africa, has a REC Express for bank services. So if you've ever wanted a solution to download your bank statements and have it match automatically the cleared transactions within bank services, that's what Parasoft does. And the reason why a lot of these development partners are outside of North America is because traditionally within Canada and the United States, ACPAC Plus, ACPAC for Windows, and now Sage 300 was positioned as a small business solution. But around the world, it was sold into enterprises, mid-market and up. And so a lot of the higher-end third-party solution products that add functionality to Sage 300 are built outside of North America because Sage 300 has always been sold into larger organizations internationally. Next up is a company called Sistronics out of Dubai. They have a development center in Armenia. And they have a number of different solutions. Some of the key ones are revenue and expense deferrals. So if you have deferred revenue for subscription licenses or um, other types of con contract revenue that you're recognizing over future periods, that's one of their more important solutions. If you're in trade and freight forwarding, they have an AR AP settlements where you can contra AR to AP invoices to the same organization. And they have tool packs. If you've ever struggled with reconciling your subledger transactions to the control accounts in GL, their tool pack solution helps you identify where those inconsistencies are between the subledger entries and your GL control accounts. Next up would be Tyrox. We mentioned Don Thompson in the first session this morning. He's the president of Tyrox out of Vancouver. So they're the one exception to the international nature of our client base. He's based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, the birthplace of ACPAC. Uh, he's got a number of different productivity tools that help automate and streamline processes within Sage 300, but also update master files 
particularly if you're in a multi-company environment. So what that does is if you set up the chart of accounts in one company, it will replicate the chart of accounts across all companies. Same thing with customers, vendors, IC items. You set them up once, it replicates those master files across multiple companies. If you have user security profiles and you want to have the same users set up in multiple companies, same thing. We can replicate the users and their security profiles across a number of companies. And there's a whole bunch of different utilities that I won't speak directly to in this session unless you've got specific questions. Next up, Orchid Systems. You met them this morning, platinum sponsor for the event today. Their number one selling product is EFT processing for Sage 300. Now they have one for Sage Intact. But they do intercompany transactions. If you ever have to allocate expenses or revenue across multiple Sage 300 companies, it automatically balances those loan account entries so that you don't have to manually reconcile the due to, due from accounts at month end. If you buy and sell between companies, you can create an AR invoice in one company, it does the AP invoice automatically. And then you pay the AP invoice, it does the AR receipt automatically. Or if you use the operation suite, order entry to PO, OE shipment to PO receipt, OE invoice to PO invoice, it can automate the entire sales transaction process for you. Uh, they do bin tracking if you need warehouse management. They do RMA if you have returns. They do um, document management link and notes where you can attach documents to any field within Sage 300. They have a portfolio of 13 different product lines Info Explorer, a nice little BI tool that does simple SQL queries into Sage 300 data, creates nice graphical dashboards. Uh, next up is Norming. They have the de facto fixed asset solution for Sage 300. So if you need to uh, amortize your assets, uh, run depreciation schedules, your asset schedule, which is the report you would give to your accountants and auditors when they come in at year end, it shows the roll forward from opening cost to closing cost. It does leasing, it does maintenance, and it does barcode tracking as well with a mobile app. Here we go with apps again. And then it also has a product called Resource Manager. Employee expenses, timesheets, PO requisitions, AP automation. And what this does is it creates remote access through a web browser or mobile apps for non-ACPAC, non-Sage 300 users to be able to create transactions which turn into an entry within Sage 300. So with the web mobile apps or the web portal, they can enter and submit their timesheets, expenses, and POs. They get approved online, and then once they're fully approved, it creates the transaction in Sage 300 seamlessly because it's all running on the same SQL database. It's just using a different interface to access the information. And then finally, uh, AutoSimply, yes. AutoSimply is the manufacturing solution for Sage 300 globally. It's actually marketed as Sage 300 manufacturing in South Africa and Asia. But in North America, we don't have the license to use that term, so it's just AutoSimply manufacturing. So if you're a small to mid-sized manufacturing company, they have manufacturing orders, they have shop floor control, production planning, you can plan your purchasing as well as your production of finished goods. It has a barcoding solution for operations where you can do PO receipts, OE shipments, IC stock counts within the warehouse using a barcode Wi-Fi service. And it has a quality control module, it does an advanced stock take for cycle counting in Sage 300, and there's a Sales Anywhere platform where for remote sales people who want to take an order and deliver it, generate the OE shipment off a delivery truck, get a signed electronic signature, and have that automatically update Sage 300. Or you can generate the order, the shipment, and the invoice all in one go on a handheld device in the field as you're meeting with your customers. And that basically sums up our portfolio. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, Rob is known to be a Wikipedia, walking Wikipedia, so <laughs> that was great, very informative. Thank you. Oh, I think everybody knows me. I'm employee number seven, James. Um, I'm the BI practice, practice leader here at Bass. I apologize for my voice. I probably had 30 minutes of voice left, and I spent 45 in the last session. I'll try my best. So in the, in the remaining 15 minutes, any questions? It is, does anyone but want to ask a question to our panelists? Sorry, I was a little bit late getting here. The name of the add-on for the um, expenses? The expenses was Norming's Resource Manager. Norming's. 
And if you come to our table, you can buy a brochure for $5. No, they're free. Uh, I really love the idea you're talking about integration. So our organization has a challenge to manage Amazon invoices. Basically, it's our AP function. So can you help us to uh, integrate Amazon invoice system into the Sage? James, you'll take that or? Thank you. The best person is actually there, but I'll try to take a stab at it. Abs the answer is absolutely yes. Um, for those of you that doesn't know, we do have a solution called Bass Bridge. And this is a solution which we leverage to help a lot of our clients. Typically, it's on the order entry side, right? Because you, on Amazon, you're selling, whether you go through uh, Shopify, Amazon, or whether you're like in a membership environment, you process 30, 40,000 invoices annually. Imagine trying to import that. Or, I don't know what's worse, 30,000, 40,000 invoices a year versus 6,000 invoices a day. So that's the capability of Bass Bridge where we review your information with you or your requirements with you, right? But by leveraging Bass Bridge, then we're able to understand and determine the appropriate modules in which you need to go into Sage and then integrate that. So the answer is absolutely yes. I probably should have just said Bass Bridge, but okay. So before we take additional questions, I and the theme of this session is how you can extend your Sage with the solution that you're already running. I would like Sandra Hunter to uh, describe a scenario that, that they have adopted in terms of integrating different technologies uh, to make their processes efficient. So Sandra, I'm going to request you to share how you used the other tools that you are already using in the organization, such as SharePoint, uh, with Sage uh, to bring in efficiency. So if you can share your success story, that would be great. Yes, so one of the issues we had run into uh, during the pandemic as we all moved to working at home uh, was how do we save our accounts payable invoices, which were still coming in by email or, or through the mail, very paper-based. Uh, what we have been doing before the pandemic was actually printing in invoices and saving them in paper files. So what we have done, um, because we, were, we had already implemented SharePoint, we actually moved the invoices to SharePoint, and with uh, Barty and her team's help, we actually did a workflow that allows us to actually go from the authorization point uh, right through to when payments are made. So we can follow it, an invoice uh, through the workflow. It actually names the invoice, so the naming convention is the same through, through all the invoices. They're easy to find. We know who authorized the invoice, when it was authorized, and uh, what the check number was or the EFT number that paid the invoice and the date. So it's from end to end for us. Uh, this, this was a, a great solution. Uh, so much easier than trying to find things in paper. The other thing is the people who approve the invoices, um, you know, they still have control of the invoices. There's one copy that goes to accounting that we, we keep that nobody can touch, but everybody else has their eyes on invoices that they approved. So there's no coming back to the accounting department to say, uh, you know, how much do we spend for this? Do you know, uh, you know, where are we at in the budget? They actually have access to their own information, which has helped us quite a bit. Thank you, Sandra. And when you hear from you know your the other users, it's it, that that confirms that you know the add-ons work. Doesn't matter w which bucket you're pulling it from, but it just works. So in the remaining ten minutes, any questions? Yes, please. Oh, so th that's a great question. The question is the add-on that Sandra described that was uh, custom development with integration to Sage uh, to SharePoint. Yeah, if I may, uh, this speaks to the integration possibilities with Sage 300. There's a number of different ways that you can integrate. It's a rule within the development community that we never write directly to the database tables in Sage 300. You always go through the business logic layer because Sage has extended the view logic or the business logic of Sage 300 through APIs, application program interfaces. And when you integrate properly with Sage 300, all of the security and validation that is part of Sage 300 accrues to that integration as well. So you see people more and more integrating to, to things like SharePoint. 
There's actually a Bass client in the room. I've just seen her sitting in the room. I won't point her out, uh, but it's a national organization who just licensed the Orchid Report Runner with Process Scheduler. And what it does is it generates all of their regional reports up to a national report. And they use SharePoint to collect all of these reports and generate them into the SharePoint folders. So all the national and regional managers have access to the reports automatically and they don't have to do anything manually through the distribution process. So that's a way to automate both the generation and distribution of standard crystal reports to the people that need to get them in the format that they need to see the information. And that's integrated with SharePoint. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so we'll take one of the generic ones for the panel. Um, this was a, a question from our users on add-ons that when they uh, implement add-ons to their core Sage, how difficult or how painful or how easy is it to upgrade their Sage environment? And what's involved? I'll start and then pass it down. The benefit of the SDK is really important. I highlighted that when I mentioned SDK development partners. These people are writing specific to Sage 300 and they follow the same upgrade path. And in fact, under the gold development license agreement with Sage, we have 30 to 60 days to maintain compatibility whenever Sage releases a version upgrade. So that's one of the key benefits of an SDK-based third-party solution. We are legally bound to keep current with the latest releases of Sage 300. So within 60 days, we will have an update available that you can migrate with. And that's another important aspect of considering the third-party solutions that you integrate with, is that there's a path for you to upgrade along with the rest of your core Sage 300 modules. What Rob said. Um, <clears throat> now, all, all kidding aside, um, as a part of the upgrade methodology or update process, right, we have to go through UAT testing. So it is very, very important that as part of UA testing, you go through and validate the functionalities of all the add-on solutions as well as your core. So there's a double check. You have the benefit of the goal development partners, right? Their standards that's set for them. But as part of the upgrade process, right, it is also our responsibility collectively to test the functionality of Sage 300 and the selected add-ons. Thank you, James. Any general questions? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our repository of questions online and um, to the panel. This question is, when I try to export reports from Sage um, and open them to modify, the, the formats are not necessarily user-friendly. What can I do about that? So I guess the question is, they are exporting the crystal output and trying to manipulate the data. Well. When we export the information of the crystal, right, then, then we're able to either leverage um, BAS, uh, one of the BAS options, right, um, BAS Bridge, right, to sort of realign the information, to remap the information. So it's just like any integration. Um, there's a sort of process that we go through, but this is more of a mapping exercise. Actually, I'll take a slightly different slant on this question because whenever I hear someone is using Crystal to generate a report and then they have to export it from Crystal, the question that comes to my mind, is Crystal the right tool for what they're doing? Because it tells me that they're using Crystal as a reporting engine, but it's not delivering the data in a format that's usable by the user. And what I mean by that is if you think about what Crystal generates, it's a two-dimensional static report. And if they're having to export that data out of a report format into an Excel sheet or a database, it means that the users want to use that data in a multi-dimensional format or in a format where the data is still alive and they can manipulate it, which screams business intelligence. Right? And that's why you have solutions like Sage Enterprise Intelligence that has pivot tables, multi-dimensional views of the data. Right? The Nectary solution will give you a standard two-dimensional report but it also then gives you the ability, whether it's Sage Intelligence or Sage Enterprise Intelligence, they still use pivot tables in Excel to be able to manipulate the view of the data that you're looking at. Uh, Orgid would use Info Explorer. It's an OLAP data cube. It just stands for Online Analytical Processing. And the concept we use is that the data is alive. 
because the user can choose the format of the data, how it's filtered, how it's formatted, and adding formulas to it. And that gives the user the power to manipulate the data to get to an understanding of the trend or whatever it is that they're trying to find by querying the database in Sage 300. So whenever I hear that kind of a question where they're exporting data from Crystal, I'd have to question, is Crystal really the right tool? Maybe they need to look at a BI tool that does analytics as opposed to a standard two-dimensional static report. We have to run so many reports to get say, uh, in the information that we want out of Sage and then use Excel to uh, consolidate. What can we do different about that? Uh, there again, that's very similar to the last question. I would look at Sage Enterprise Intelligence because it gives you the ability to pull the data out and then manipulate it and combine multiple pieces of information. So again, this idea of the multi-dimensional view of the data, typically a good data cube or OLAP tool will consolidate four or five reports into one data cube. Because what you're saying by having to generate four or five reports is that you either have different users with different information needs, or the same user needs to see that data in different views or different perspectives. So a BI tool is built to manage that type of requirement, as opposed to trying to generate three or four different reports to get at the same information from a different perspective. Absolutely, and I, I think when we run reports, typically we're sort of very focused on a modular specific, right? You might want a sales report, you might want a GL report, but a, a BI solution could expand beyond that. If you're in operations, if you're in distribution, you would love to be able to take in, uh, inventory information with your POs, with your sales orders. Well, guess what? That's three modules, right? So with the power of a BI solution, we're able to create data cubes that combines all of that information. So in essence, the effort to you really is to identify your need, and then we're, ever, we're able to execute that, or a BI solution is able to execute that, so when you run the report, it's a click of a button, right? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to see, hey, here's the items, here's all the customers that bought it, here's all the um, vendors that we bought it from, and think about extending beyond that, right? Um, any sort of compliance reporting, lot numbers, um, so there's, endless possibilities that you could leverage with a BI solution. Thank you, team. So with that, let's give a huge round of applause to Sandra, James, and Rob.